Welcome to the Character Chronicles, the people's show where we check the pulse of Husker Nation brought to you by DPS Concrete Construction. Check them out at dpsconstruction.net. They are your local concrete experts. This is my gut reaction to Nebraska's loss to Maryland, 13 to 10. This is one of the lowest scoring, most exciting, if I'm going to use that term, roller coaster up and down, back and forth ugliest, fun to watch just because you never knew what was going to happen, but but ugly games I think I've ever seen in my life. And of course, if we had 13 and they had 10, I would have thought it was beautiful and magical art. But of course, I feel the opposite because uh, <clears throat> we have the lower number at the end of the game. Very interesting game. Very frustrating game. All right, a couple of things real quick. I am not a glass half full kind of guy. I'm not a glass half empty kind of guy. While everyone's arguing about whether the glass is half full or half empty, I'm busy drinking the thing. In other words, I grew up a Husker fan. My entire week, every fall, Sunday through Friday, revolved around whether Nebraska won or lost the game. I went to Nebraska because it was my dream. I chose to make my job watching and analyzing Nebraska football. I love Nebraska football. If you think... Some things I say are too positive or too negative. It's just my honest opinion. It doesn't mean I'm right. Obviously, I think that I am or I wouldn't say it. I just give my honest opinion. It's passionate. It's frustrating right now. It's perplexing. But it's honest. It's my perspective. That's all I can give. All right. Let's dive into this game. First of all, if you're as perplexed by Nebraska's insane turnover problem as I am, I don't know, hit the like button. All right, so coming into this game, Nebraska's 396 consecutive sellout, approaching 400 here in the near future. All right, Tulia Tagovailoa was a Big Ten's leading passer, Maryland's all-time passing leader as well. This is stuff that was intriguing to me coming into this game. Because I was, I, was I was interested how some of these matchups were going to go with us. some things from our defense versus their offense and vice versa. The Ter Terrapins offense had allowed six sacks in each of the last two games, 12 combined. The Black Shirts were second in the Big Ten with 28 sacks on the year. How is that matchup going to pan out? All right, Maryland's defense tied for third with Purdue in the Big Ten with 27 sacks by their defense. I was curious to see how our 3-3-5 defense, we already got five DBs on the field, how our pass rush was going to do versus Maryland pass offense and how Maryland's pass rush was going to do versus our offensive line, which hasn't been great at protecting the quarterback when we have the ball. Now, Heinrich Harburg had struggled throwing the ball, and I was curious to see how he was going to bounce back after a tough game. Obviously, he struggled. Then he gets banged up during the game. Then Jeff Sims comes in. Then Chubba Purdy comes in. I think the water boy was next in line. Horrible joke. I'm sorry. Okay, gut reaction. Raw, right? All right. I was just curious to see how Harburg was going to bounce back after that Michigan State game. He's a guy with a lot of heart, and he's, he's the leading rusher on the team with the most rushing yards in the Big Ten coming into today. All right. Matt Rule wanted Emmett Johnson coming into this game to get 15 to 20 touches. He wanted him to get the ball more often. Rule also wanted some more explosive plays out of our offense that didn't have to come from the quarterback position. Also, better third down conversion rate okay rule wanted to steal a possession or two throughout the game now he went for it on fourth down a couple of times he he faked a punt early on and we converted uh then we immediately threw an interception okay at that point our 23rd turnover of the season which led the nation at that point so i'm sure we still lead the nation at the end of the game right at the end of the first quarter zero to zero the black shirts were in maryland's a uh, backfield a lot okay uh the black shirts kept their opponents scoreless all right, in the first quarter for the sixth time this year in 10 games. Unfortunately, Nebraska's offense was held scoreless for the seventh time this year. All right, turnovers and our defense. To me, that was the key to winning this game. All right, Maryland's offense averages 31 points per game. The Huskers average less than 20 points per game. So the defense and turnovers, that was going to be key, right? All right, Nebraska coming in was minus 12 in the turnover margin, which is 128th in the country. All right, and could our offensive line, okay, help one of the best defenses? Okay, could our offense, I'm sorry, help one of the best defenses in the Big Ten, our black shirts, and find a way to win this game? 0-0 zero zero at the end of the first quarter. Ten minutes left, second quarter. Jeff Sims goes in at quarterback for a banged-up Heinrich Harburg. All right, with seven minutes left in the second quarter, Nebraska had zero pass yards at that point. 
Okay, before they finally got their first passing yards of the game on a short completion from Jeff Sims. Now, right before halftime, Matt Rule, okay, as I mentioned, faked a punt, had two fourth down conversion attempts, okay, but we had no points, okay, at that point, even though two of those three things that actually worked in our favor, the fake punt and one of the fourth down conversion attempts. I just love Matt Rule's aggressiveness was all I was getting. He, had, he played with, he coached with not a lot of fear this game. He coached with aggressiveness. He clearly wants to become bowl eligible. Now our defense was really keeping us in the game at this point, but with 231 left in the second quarter, Maryland scores seven to zero. Okay. And on our next, they're up. All right. And on our, our next possession, Jeff Sims, all right, throws an interception. Nebraska's second INT of the game at that point, but the Blackshirts kept the Terrapins out of the end zone. Now at halftime, it was seven to nothing. Okay. Here are some interesting stats at halftime. Okay, third down conversion rate, Nebraska was 0-4. So they weren't exactly meeting Matt Rule's goal at that point. When it came to passing yards, we only had 50. When it came to rushing yards, Maryland has zero. We had 84 at halftime. Penalties, we had zero. Maryland has seven for 62. That was really helping Nebraska along with the black shirts playing well to that point. All right, turnovers, we had two. They had zero time of possession. We had the ball for 18 minutes. They had it for like 11.56. We had it for 18.04. All right, a couple minutes left, or a couple minutes into the third quarter, Omar Brown forces a Maryland fumble, and this is where the back and forth and the turnovers, it was, it was crazy. All right, he forces a Maryland fumble. Nebraska recovers at the Maryland 27-yard line. Huskers capitalize in a few plays on an end around. They run it in for a touchdown, 7-7. Seven to seven. At this point, it looks to me like the offense is moving the ball better with Jeff Sims. As we know, there was turnovers down, down the road after this point. Then Pur Purdy comes in, looks good for most of his drive, and you know, throws the INT. But I'll get to that. The Terrapins, next possession. Okay, the Black Shirts intercept Tag of Viola. Maryland's second turnover. All right, the Huskers offense gets the ball at the Terrapins 31 yard line. The Huskers capitalize three points. They have 10 points off turnovers to this point. Our offense does off of Maryland turnovers. And then Tristan Alvano makes the 38 yard field goal, put Nebraska up 10 to 7. Now, there are about 50 seconds left in the third quarter. Okay, after a 14 play, 58 yard drive, nearly eight minutes. All right, Maryland goes for it on fourth down and at Nebraska's 20-yard line, give or take. But Nash Hutmaker and Ty Robinson stuff them and stop Maryland short of the first down. All right, Jeff Sims fumbles on a quarterback draw that had basically essentially become a broken play at that point. All right, Maryland ends up tying the game with a field goal after that. Then they intercept Jeff Sims, uh, another turnover for Nebraska, who was trying to find Billy Kemp on what appeared to be a double move at that point in time, the Terrapins. Have the ball in the Huskers 49 yard line. They drive down to the Nebraska three yard line or so, and then they fumble, and the Huskers recover. <laughs> Be a lot funnier if we'd have won. All right, this game's a freaking roller coaster, is what I have here. It's a freaking roller coaster ride. Whoever wins this game will be whoever gives the game away the least, which unfortunately turned out to be Maryland. All right, then here comes Chubba Purdy in the game, Nebraska's third quarterback of the game. Now, to this point in the fourth quarter, Maryland had 10 penalties for 92 yards. Now, Nebraska did end up with a penalty or two, but Nebraska had no accepted penalty yards, all right, after a penalty-free game the week before to that point. Now, obviously, this wasn't a clean game, but the penalties on our end have gone down. The turnovers, through the roof. All right, Chubba Purdy leads Nebraska on a great drive, good throws, three great runs, deep into Maryland territory with almost a guaranteed field goal, Okay. Chubba Purdy throws an interception. The Huskers' fifth turnover of the day. All three quarterbacks threw an interception. Chubba, Jeff, Harburg, all three of them threw at least one interception on the day. Now, I do think Purdy's INT is on the play calling. You've pretty much got a guaranteed field goal. You're deep in their territory. You've got a defense that up to that point had really kept you in the game, and that was really about it. Okay, and Maryland's uh, turnovers, uh, turnovers on their part and penalties at that point. I, I didn't like the play call. I didn't like taking that risk. I didn't think it was necessary. Okay. Keep the ball on the ground. Do what you do best. Don't put your third string quarterback in that, that type of position. A guy who hasn't had any experience hardly at all in a year. I put it more on the play calling that interception. Cause we almost had basically a guaranteed field goal. And who knows what might happen if we run the ball and make break a play or don't. All right, don't put your third-string quarterback in a position like that when you're in field goal range to go ahead and a defense playing great, still tied 10-10. to 10. That being said, Maryland went right down the field. On a day that saw eight combined turnovers, Maryland outgained Nebraska by over 100 total yards. 
The Terrapins end a four-game losing streak and become bowl eligible for the third straight year by kicking a game-winning field goal to win 13-10. to Matt Rule has done a lot of really good things this year. The defense is playing solid. The run game is solid. Yeah, pitching the ball on the option and all this and that ain't exactly pretty. Um, Alvano is, is rolling as a field goal kicker. Our return game in special teams is just non-existent. We've addressed that before. The single biggest, and it's crazy because we have three highly recruited quarterbacks. Okay, Heinrich Harburg was a top 20 dual threat quarterback in the country when he came out of high school. Chubba Purdy was a four-star recruit. Look at what his brother's doing now with the Niners. Jeff Sims is in Nebraska, at Nebraska. He transferred here because an NFL scout told Matt Sims on top of his, Matt Rule, on top of Jeff's running ability, he can make any throw you want a quarterback to make. We have three quarterbacks with a lot of talent. The single biggest mistake that Matt Rule has made since he got here, and it's not the end of the world, but it is beyond frustrating because the transfer portal is coming up, so on and so forth. I don't want to go down the whole rabbit hole was I think entrusting the wrong quarterback to be our starting quarterback through the transfer portal this year. Just my humble thoughts, not trying to throw anybody under the bus, but I think that's pretty much beyond obvious. A lot of other things look a lot better for Nebraska, but the turnovers come down to the quarterback position. Also, the lack of pass blocking from the O-line and some other things. All right, here's my questions. Number one, let me know in the comments below, what is your honest gut reaction, and thoughts to this game. Let me know below. I, I do go through and read all the comments. Number two, will Nebraska still make a bowl game? Do you believe they will? Yes or no? And number three, you're that old saying, you got two quarterbacks, you got none. Well, do we have three quarterbacks or none? Here's my question. Who do you think should start our next game here at the University of Nebraska? we still got two chances to try to become bowl eligible. All right, until next time, Husker Nation, as always, you can check out characterchronicles.com. It's where your, all your football hopes and dreams will come true. It's just science. Go Big Red, and always remember to throw the ball. If you're a diesel mechanic, CDL driver, or concrete finisher looking for work in the Omaha metro area, DPS Construction is the employer. For you, if you're a general contractor, building owner, or property manager looking for concrete repair or work done in the Omaha metro area, such as street paving, building floors, and parking lots, check out dpsconstruction.net.